We now come to our lesson on history and culture. This is the fifth session in our study of expository preaching, our first course. And when you think about history and culture, what you're dealing with here is the, the history behind the text. We're in the process of learning how to interpret the text, how to interpret the passage correctly, and, and, and you deal with diagramming, and we're going to be looking at significant words and, and the context that surrounds the text, uh, the textual context that surrounds the text. But in this session, what we're going to look at is the history that stands behind the text. When that epistle was written, when Paul wrote his letters, or Peter wrote his letters, there was a, there was a situation that was involved. There was a history that, that, that basically forced these men to write these letters. They wanted to address situations that were occurring in, in the churches, uh, in their lives, um, and so they, they wrote these letters, and, and so we want to be able to get back to that history, to understand the situation that was taking place that prompted the writing of the letter in the first place. And that's what this session is about. It's about looking at that history, that culture, that background information to be able to understand what prompted the writer to write the letter in the first place. So when you think of history and culture, if you're looking at the web page here, um, there's a definition, the way I would define what we're studying, what we're doing right now. History and culture, it involves any historical or cultural elements touched on by the immediate passage. The biblical book that contains that passage and other elements as, as discussed by sources that are designed to help explain such matters. History, historical and cultural context relates to just about anything that is, in a sense, outside the text that will help you understand what is in the text itself. For example, what was the life like for the Israelites as they wandered in the desert? You know, we have the historical accounts of, of the Israelites wandering in the desert and, and going out of Egypt and going to the land of Israel, to the promised land. But what was it like to live during that period of time? And so there's, there's these kinds of questions that we want to answer, and that prompts us to look at history and culture. Uh, what, what did the Pharisees believe about the Sabbath? That's another kind of question. You know, you've got to know who the Pharisees are. Pharisees were around in the time of Jesus. And so they always kept saying that Jesus keeps breaking the Sabbath. What was their understanding of the Sabbath? Was it the same as what the Old Testament taught? Or had they changed it or abused that or misinterpreted uh, some of the understanding or some of the teachings of the Old Testament? And so when we think about these things about history and culture, what we're dealing with is what was the situation that prompted the writing of the letter? What was going on? What was happening when, when Paul was writing the letter to, to the Thessalonians or writing the letter to the, to, to the church at Rome and, uh, or the church in Ephesus? What, what was happening and what was going on there and why would he write this letter to them and address these situations that were occurring? So you want to be able to understand this. And so when you think about dealing with history and culture, what you have to deal with are certain categories. Uh, there are categories of things that you want to look for look and look at and, and address. And the first category is what I call the biblical writer. The biblical writer, you can see the, um, that here on the, on, in your notes. The biblical writer, when you think about the writer, you're thinking about the author who wrote the letter. Who is that author? Is it Paul? Is it Peter? Uh, James? And, and there's always been these questions about who wrote the book of Hebrews. And there's these discussions that uh, there's like eight different viewpoints on, on, on who wrote the book of Hebrews. And it's important to know who wrote the book. And not just the name of the person, but more information about that person. And so when you think about the biblical writer, you want to think about these questions that I have, that I have listed here in your notes. Who is the author? What circumstances is he writing in? In terms of where is he when he writes? So, for example, when Paul writes the book of First Thessalonians and Second Thessalonians, when he writes those two epistles... He's not in Thessalonica when he writes those letters. He's outside the city. He's somewhere else. Um, if he was actually there, he would not need to write a letter. He could just talk to them. But since he's away from them, he's in another place. He's actually in Corinth when he writes these letters. 
to, to the Thessalonians. Um, and, and so you want to know that. You want to know what, what's going on with the author. Where is he? And, and, and what's happening to him as much as possible. What does the author say about himself in the book? In Paul especially, when you look at his writing, when he uh, announces himself and says, Paul the Apostle, sometimes he will go for a few verses and, and give some more information about his role, his function within the life of the church and, and what God has done in his life. And so he'll give a little background to who he is. So you want to be aware of those things. You want to write down any key words or phrases that convey the author's tone. In other words, uh, you kind of did this with textual observations, but as you read through a book, let's say you're studying the book of Ephesians, your, your passage is from the book of Ephesians, and you're studying the entire book to get a background of who, the, who, of who Paul is. One of the things you can do is as you read through Ephesians, is note, note the tone in which, you, which he writes, not just in your immediate passage, but throughout the letter. And that would be helpful information that you could, you could discover. Is the author pleased or is he concerned? Is he angry? Is he frustrated? Who or what with uh, the recipients or someone else? And um, is, he, is he upset at someone or is he rejoicing in the Lord or is he concerned about a matter with, with just the church at large or, or the church in that location or with certain people in that location? So you got to be able to understand that. you got to be able to kind of get into the mind of Paul, get into the mind of Peter, and understand where they're coming from. Uh, you could ask this question, does the tone of his writing change throughout the letter, or does it remain the same? That's another thing you can look at. Is, is he the same, is he writing in the same style, or is he writing in the same uh, tone uh, in the beginning as he would in the end, or has he... Uh, started in a sense of, of saying positive things and then he went to talking about negative things or, you know, what, what is going on with the author? That's the big issue. And you want to relate the tone to the subject matter and themes of the letter. For example, Paul's tone with the Galatians, it was harsh due the, to their accepting of heresy being taught in their church. And, and Paul would say, oh, foolish Galatians. And, you're, and it's like he's, he's just dumbfounded that they would allow this to be taught in their church, and he's like, couldn't believe it. And so he has to address it. And so you can see the author's tone. You want to be aware of that as you work through this category of the biblical writer. So you want to, to, to think about who is the author writing the letter, and not just what is his name, and, and, and just a little bit of history about him. Why would he write this letter um, and what prompted him to do so? So you gotta think about the biblical writer. The other category is the biblical audience. Now these are the recipients, those who receive the letter. So who are the, uh, who are the people in Ephesus? Who, where do, who are they? What, what's their life like? What's their culture? Are they all Jewish? Are they Gentile? If they're Gentile, what kind of life do they lead? Uh, how do they live in, the, in this world? What is their daily life? You want to be able to think about those kinds of things. What circumstances are they in? What, uh, another question is, what does the author say about them in the book? Does, if, so if you're looking at Ephesians and your passage is from Ephesians, you will have want to have read the book of Ephesians so that you can understand a little bit more about why Paul's writing to them and, 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 and talking about them. Maybe he says something in another passage that may not relate exactly to your passage, but it gives you a broader understanding of, of these people that he's writing to and what's going on in their lives. How are they related to the author or even to others within the book that may be mentioned? Has the author written to them before? So if you're reading 2 Thessalonians, you know that there's a 1 Thessalonians. That means Paul has written to them before. The Corinthians, there's 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. And in fact, Paul wrote other letters to the church at Corinth. They're not in our scriptures, but based on what he says in 1 and 2 Corinthians, there have been other letters that he wrote to them. So you want to be aware of those things. And if he has written before, what are, were the key themes in that writing? So if you're going to study 2 Thessalonians, you need to have an understanding of 1 Thessalonians. 
If you're going to study 2 Peter, you want to be aware of the, the first epistle of, of Peter and what those themes were and see if there's any connection points uh, between the two. So you want to think about the audience. How, who are they? What, what's their lifestyle? Uh, what circumstances are they in? Uh, what, what's the situation that's happening in their world? You want to be aware of those things. So that's the second category. Third category is the city or location. City or location. And, and here you want to ask yourself, you've kind of already asked where is the author located when he writes the book? Where, where are the recipients located? So now you're not just looking at the people, you're now you're looking at the city of Ephesus itself or, or the city of Rome or the city of Thessalonica. What was that city like? How large was the city? Uh, how many people would be there? What kind of businesses would be there? What kind of um, religious groups would be there? So you want to get an idea of the location. You need to be able to find it on a map. You need to be able to understand where that city is located in, in connection with other places that Paul traveled. Um, especially like if you go through the book of Acts and Paul's traveling from city to city to city. You want to be able to kind of follow his path so you can see how he's progressing and where he's going and where he's been. And so it helps you get a perspective on how things relate. And so, like, for example, in, in the First Thessalonians, the book of First Thessalonians, I know based on um, putting all these pieces of information together that when Paul wrote Thessalonians, he was in Corinth. And when he was in Corinth, by the time he got to Corinth, after he left Thessalonica, it had been at least nine months to a year before, uh, by the time he left Thessalonica before he wrote that first epistle. So it was near, nine months to a year, and then that letter is written. It wasn't like he left the city and then he wrote a letter. And so you, you get a time frame. And, um, and so Second Thessalonians is actually a year after that. So it, it's, it, when you understand the hist history and culture, you begin to see all these connections, and you begin to see how these books were written in a, to address situations that had developed over a period of time. And so you want to be aware of the city, the location where it's at, what places are mentioned in the book. What do we know about these places from elsewhere in the book or even in the Bible? Are these places mentioned elsewhere? It's interesting that in, if you think about Ephesus, uh, Paul met with the leaders of Ephesus in a town called Miletus. That's recorded in the book of Acts, chapter 20. If you think about the city of Ephesus and the church of Ephesus, there was a letter that was written to them that's contained in the book of Revelation in chapter 2. And that was written many years later after the book of Ephesians was written by Paul. And so if you begin to see these connection points uh, and see how uh, the, knowing the historical background and cultural background, it, it just adds to your understanding of what the text is about and what Paul or Peter or ever who the author is, um, what they're actually saying. Next category is the situation. The situation that's occurring in that location. What has brought about the writing of the letter? What, ha what has really created the situation that prompts Paul or Peter to write this letter? That's the big question. What events have transpired? Has something happened that has generated Paul to, to address these matters? For, for, Thess for First Thessalonians, you know what happened? Uh, he, this is recorded in First Thessalonians chapter 3. Paul tells us that Paul's in Corinth and he had sent Timothy back to check on the status of the Thessalonian church. And by the time Timothy caught up with him, Paul had made it all the way to Corinth. So Paul meets Timothy in Corinth, or Timothy really meets Paul in Corinth, and then Timothy tells Paul, here's what's happening. Here's what's going on in the city or in the church. And so Paul writes that letter prompted by the information that Timothy provided for him about the Thessalonian church and what was going on. And there were some good things and there were some not so good things happening. And Paul has to address those in his letter that he writes. So you want to be aware of that. What is the author's relationship with the audience? And we've kind of talked about that already. Is there any information that may exist outside the book 
that may help us. And when you think about the epistles, usually the book of Acts can come, in, uh, come into play here and be a helpful resource for you. Because there you get, you get to see how Paul was interacting with these people and as he went from place to place. You get to see what happened when he went to Philippi, what happened when he went to Thessalonica, uh, what happened when he went to Corinth. You get to, you get to see the historical uh, situation there. And so sometimes that can help you have a background understanding or a basic understanding of what is happening um, in terms of Paul's interaction already with that church. So by the time he writes a letter, it's not like he's writing a letter to a church he doesn't know. Most of these places he's been to, he's lived there, he's ministered there, and, and he's dealt with the people in the church, and he's ministered to them. And so he's writing the letter because he still cares about them, he's concerned about them, and he wants to address maybe situations that have transpired. And so you want to be aware of that. And the next category is the officially asking, what is the author's purpose for writing? What is the author's purpose for writing? Why did he write the book? And usually he may state this actually in the book itself. And it, and it could be contained there, just directly written out. And, and here's some examples, 1 John 5.13. It was written to believers to give them assurance of salvation. That's stated. 1 Timothy 3.15. To correct conduct in the church and provide organization in the church to give some instructions on how the church should be organized and, and to address some areas of wrong conduct. And so that gives you a, a perspective of why the book was written. John 20, uh, this is a, a gospel account, but John 20, verses 30 to 31, it was written that the reader may place his or her faith in Christ. And so you, you get a perspective on that, in the book itself, you may be able to get a hint of why did the author write the book. And so you want to be aware of that um, as one of the categories. Now the next category is the date of composition. And this is the, the, the question that you're asking when, when did Paul or Peter, when did they actually write? What are the time frames of when, they're, when they wrote their books? So what you want to think about the events that are mentioned. Are there any events mentioned in the book? That can help you with understanding the time frame. Uh, can the date be determined for the writing of the book? There are sometimes debates as to when books were written, but based on what scholars have researched and how they have uh, studied these books, uh, there's a pretty good idea of when these books were written. And, uh, but maybe that you have to look at historical events. Are there any historical events that are contained in the book? And that may help us. Um, determine the date, especially for like Old Testament books. For books in the prophets, Old Testament prophets books, uh, you find historical data, uh, situations, maybe even like world events or uh, major events that they're talking about, that they're discussing, and that can help you in, in kind of getting an idea of when these books were written and when these events took place. So you want to think about, think about that. Uh, for example, just to give you an idea, the first book in the New Testament that was written, chronologically speaking. Now, we think it could be Matthew, right? Because we go by the order in which the New Testament books appear in our Bible. But in reality, the Gospels were not written, Matthew, Mark, and Luke were not written until late 50s, early 60s, that time period. Now, you have to, you have to understand that Jesus died in like AD 33 or so. And... Um, and so when, you know, Jesus had already been dead and resurrected for many years uh, before Matthew, Mark, Luke's Gospels, and even the book of Acts began to show up in written form. And so it, it was years after that those events took place. But the first book that was written in the New Testament chronologically was the epistle of James. And, the, and James is James, the Lord's half-brother. He's the author of that book. And, and so if you think about interest, you know, the dates of when these books were written, they were written at various times. And, um, and so there's some charts and some study Bibles that you can see that kind of give you a listing of those dates. But you want to be able to think about that. You don't want to for, uh, overlook that fact of understanding the date of composition. And, and the final category that you're looking for is are there any 
other people mentioned in the book. Uh, Paul writes to uh, the, the church at Philippi, and in that book he mentions Timothy, he mentions Epaphras, and uh, he mentions other people. Sometimes he mentions people at the end of the book when he's kind of giving his final conclusions and goodbyes, that kind of thing. But you want to uh, be aware of other people that could be mentioned in the book, especially if they're mentioned in the passage that you're actually going to preach. Uh, if, if, if those people are mentioned, where else can you find them? It, it, you may want to know more about Timothy and who he was and how old he was and what would be the age difference between Paul and Timothy. And, and you can understand maybe why Paul would call him a son in the faith and, and Timothy would look onto him like a father because there could be an age difference between the two. And so you want to think about that. What, what is known about them from elsewhere in the book or in the Bible itself? So what can you find out about them? What is their connection to the author? What is their connection to the recipients? Uh, Timothy, if you think about Timothy, he was a companion of Paul, traveled with him, and uh, was in Ephesus. And then later on, while uh, uh, Paul and Timothy were in the city of Ephesus, and Paul had to leave and go to Macedonia. And when Paul left, he left Timothy in Ephesus. And then Paul wrote letters to him while he was in Ephesus. And those epistles is what we call First and Second Timothy. So Timothy is actually living in the city of Ephesus doing ministry there. Uh, even though those books that were addressed to him were not called Ephesians 2 and Ephesians 3. It was First uh, Timothy and Second Timothy. So, um, so anyway, you want to be aware of other people that are mentioned in your passage and know a little bit about them because Paul's mentioning them or Peter's mentioning them for a reason. So you want to be aware of that. So these are the various categories that you're, you're looking for. These are the various categories that you want to find information about. But now the question is, how do you do this? How do you find this information? How do you find information about the author, about the recipients, about the location, about the city, about the situations, the circumstances of the people, about the, um, the date or you know, these other people? How do you go about doing this? How do you uh, complete this idea of history and culture and, com and, and understand all this information? Well, if you look uh, down below, you'll see the procedure. I give you a procedure to follow. And I want you to follow this procedure. It'll work for you. It'll help you. And so let's take it step by step, and let me address each one. So first thing you do is look at your immediate passage, okay? The passage that, that you're studying, the one that you're going to preach. And, and I label that with a little lower, lowercase p. And there's a reason for that little notation. I'll show you that later when I show you my example. But you want to look at the immediate passage. You want to note any words or phrases that appear in that passage that have maybe historical or cultural significance. And that would fit one of the categories mentioned above. That's what you want to do. That's the first thing you want to do. Just walk through your passage, and, and if you notice anything in there that would be a historical or cultural reference point, that you need to go and dig deeper and find out more information about. Maybe Paul is referencing an event that took place um, that's recorded in the book of Acts. Or you'll find this definitely in the, in the prophetic books. Uh, you find this a lot in the prophetic books in the Old Testament where they're referring to an incident that happened uh, or that maybe will happen in the future. And so you want to be able to think about these things and so when you find this information, you'll put the little letter P behind it or after it just to tell you this was a historical reference category or information point that came from my immediate passage. Then the next step is to look at the biblical book itself. So this would be looking at the book of Ephesians or 1 Thessalonians or 1 Peter or whatever that book may be. Look at the biblical book that contains your immediate passage and note any words or phrases there that have historical or cultural significance and that would fit one of the categories above. So now we're broadening our, our observational look. 
Now, instead of just looking at the immediate passage, now we're going bigger, now we're going broader, and we're now looking at the book itself. And so that's why you want to be reading through the book, right? You want to have a broad understanding of the book itself so that you can note some of these historical situations. It may not be exactly in your immediate passage for the one you're studying and going to preach, but it is in the book itself. And in reality, if you're going to preach through a book of the Bible, let's say you wanted to preach through the book of Ephesians in your church and start at chapter 1, verse 1 and go to the very end. If that would be your plan, you will eventually preach on everything in that book. And so you need to be aware of all the historical situations that are taking place. And for example, if I was going to preach um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, and I'm preaching that chapter, I do know that there is something that happened in that church that is written about, not in my immediate passage, but in the next passage, in chapter 2. Paul's referring to a group of people that either rose up from within the church or came in from the outside, and, and, and these people had sway over the people, they had, um, they had influence over the people, and they were telling the people in Thessalonica, the church in Thessalonica, that when Paul visited here and when Paul ministered here nine months ago to a year ago, when he came into our city and began to preach and minister, that everything he did was in vain, that everything he did meant nothing. And so that's a historical reference point. And I still need to know about that, even if my passage is not that passage. Now, if I'm preaching through 1 Thessalonians, verse by verse, I'm going to eventually get to chapter 2. And I'm going to need to be very aware of that situation. But even if I'm not going to preach that passage, I need to be aware of that because that may help me to even add a more uh, understanding, a more um, focused attention on the passage that I'm studying and it just gives me more background. And so you want to be aware of these things. So you start with the passage itself. Then you expand to the biblical book. You're looking for words and phrases that may connect you to something historical or cultural. And the notation that you would use for the biblical book is a lowercase letter b. Now the third area, the third step in the process, you want to look at outside resources. Outside resources, and this I put as the letter O, outside resources. That would note any words or phrases that have any historical or cultural significance. That would fit one of the categories above. And so here you'll see a list of resources. These are online, available, they're free to use, and um, there's Bible.org, there's Lumina.Bible.org, there's some uh, documents, Introduction to the Old Testament, Introduction to the New Testament, uh, Christian Classics Library. If you go to that website, they have a lot of resources. And I'm not going to go through all those resources here. Uh, I will be producing a tutorial video. It'll be uh, on this same web page, and I'll kind of go through those and highlight those. That I'll be sitting down at my computer, and, and I'll bring up these websites and kind of give you a walkthrough about how you can use these websites to get this information. But the point is, there are scholars, people who have studied this information, studied these categories. They've, they've spent time to, to provide this kind of information and they've recorded it in documents, their findings. And, and so that can be very, very helpful. So you wanna start with the biblical book, you wanna start uh, or with the passage, then you wanna to go to the biblical book and then look at sources outside of, of, of the Bible to see commentators or reference or encyclopedias or uh, things that would help you to be able to find the information that you need for answering the questions that are in those categories. Because if you can understand those categories, then you're getting that historical and cultural background information that will help just provide a foundation for you to be able to understand what your passage is all about. Remember, you're trying to work for the what, the why, and the how, what we call the primary matters. And we'll be talking about that in a future session more in detail. But you, you, the historical, cultural, and background, all these things will help you towards having a better foundation of understanding what the passage is 
about. So let me walk you through an example. Um, the, my first Peter passage that we've been working on, did a diagram on this passage and, and uh, using this as a sample for everything. Uh, so if I'm going to preach this passage and I want to know the historical and cultural references and, and the background to, to this passage, here's what it looks like. Here's how I put this together. So you can see I have the different categories. I have biblical writer, biblical audience, the city, location, situation, author's purpose for writing, date of composition, other people that are mentioned. And what you notice here is that I've written out a series of statements, things that would I, I want to remember, things that I want to make sure I don't forget. And, and, and I'm not writing a book here. But what I'm trying to do is write a little summary, series of summary statements that would help me to understand each of these categories and the information that I was able to find. So, for example, in the biblical writer, I wrote here, Peter dictated the contents of this letter as Silas physically wrote it. And I found that in the biblical book. So I found that by looking at the book itself. That's why I have the letter B there. So now you see where these notations show up. I, can, I, I know that we're, when I wrote that statement, what of the three steps, uh, looking at the immediate passage, the biblical book, or sources outside of that, what helped me discover this? So that was the biblical book. Also, um, Peter wrote this letter from Rome during an intense time of persecution. And I found that also listed in the biblical book. Now, if you don't know anything about Peter and who Peter is, you may want to write more information about that. I wrote what was necessary for me for my immediate passage. I didn't have to do a full treatise on Peter's life history because I'm, I'm focusing in on what I need to know in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7-11, and those verses specifically. And so I wanted to know about that, okay, Peter, this is coming from Peter, but he's not physically writing it. Silas is doing that for him. And there was an intense time of persecution taking place. And so this letter uh, was being written during that period of time. And, and so that helps me, gives me an understanding that Peter's addressing, big picture is that he's addressing the issue of persecution. And, and so that passage connects with that larger issue. Now, when it comes to the biblical audience, uh, I just wrote one statement here. It's a mixed group, Jews and Gentiles, mixed group of Christians. And so it's not just a Jewish or a Gentile book. This is, this is both. They're mixed in together, and that's significant because they're, uh, that's, it offers a new dynamic. Peter is a Jew, been raised a Jew all of his life, and he's seen how God is now saving Gentiles and, and granting them salvation just as he would grant Jews who would repent from their sins. The gospel goes to all. No matter who you are in this world, you know that as well as I do. And so what Peter's doing is writing a book to a church that, that is a group of Jews and Gentiles. Uh, it's, it's, it's racially diverse. And that's a wonderful thing. And so, um, so you... So you, you want to know that. And this one I got from outside sources. So looking at some of those websites, I was able to get the information that I needed for that for a biblical audience. And you could expand on this, but again, what I'm trying to do is, is get the information that I need to understand about, the, uh, about my particular passage. And so there's some things that are maybe said that may not be that significant or that important, but I want to have a record of that which is important. So... I wrote that statement down for a biblical audience. Uh, for the city or location, the place is mentioned in chapter 1, verse 1. This is, these are the people and, that he's writing to, and this is where they reside. I want to know where that is. What is the area of Asia he keeps talking about? And when you look at it on a map, it's not called that anymore. It's called the country of Turkey. So that's where these people live. And, and so he's... And if you look at those individual cities, they're, they're regions. They're, it's, that means that this, was, this letter had a far-reaching effect It was in terms of geography. And I need to know that. That helps me 
uh, understand the, how this letter was um, sent out and the impact it would make, and they would read those verses that I'm going to preach. So I want to make sure I know that. And so I got that information by looking at outside resources, but also just looking at chapter 1, verse 1, the biblical book itself. And then you can see the next category, the situation occurring in that location. Uh, I got these from uh, a lot from just the biblical book itself. Christians were experiencing a severe time of persecution. The Christians were being treated like criminals. Peter mentions that in the book. The Christians were being killed for their faith in Christ Jesus. They were being martyred. The shepherds of the church were being physically attacked. I mean, he talks about that. The Christians were experiencing problems in relation to marriage and family. I mean, even amidst the persecution, they got problems in their own marriages. And so Peter's dealing with all that. So that helps me to understand the situation, what's going on in the life of the church. Because this passage was addressed to meet those situations. Now what was his purpose in writing? The author's purpose for writing. Peter wrote this letter to offer encouragement to those who were experiencing persecution. As I've already noted, Peter wrote this letter to provide guidance regarding how to live in this world while being persecuted. And that really affects my passage in 1 Peter chapter 4 because that's what he's actually doing. The things he's talking about there uh, that I'm learning as I do my diagram and, and my contextual analysis and my, and my significant word analysis, when I, when I, as I'm looking at the passage and I make my textual observations, I'm noticing that this is what he's doing. He's, he's addressing this group of people facing persecution. And he's trying to help them to learn how to live in this world while they're facing that persecution. So again, I got that information from the biblical book. Date of composition, from what we can tell, based on looking at those who have studied this in detail, Peter wrote this letter approximately around the time of Nero's rule in AD 64. And that's significant. You want to know about Nero. You want to know what kind of Caesar he was and the guy was crazy. And you need to be able to know that and know who this guy is, what his kingship was like. And then you get a perspective on the Christians who are living right in his hometown where he resides. And, and, and why, why would they face persecution? How, what brought that about? And what was that persecution like? How severe was it? We want to be able to note those things. Peter wrote this letter most likely around the same time as Paul's death, too. And Paul died in Rome. And so you want to be aware of those things. And then other people that were mentioned. Savanus, which is really Silas. Uh, you may see the word spelled Savanus, and it's another name for Silas. And then Mark, he mentions Mark, my son. John Mark, the writer of the Gospel of Mark. And there are some other connection points about John Mark that's in the book of Acts. And so it just gives you a perspective on, on people that were, that were with Peter at the time of the writing and that he mentions in his book. So again, all of this historical cultural data can be very significant and give you that foundational knowledge that you need as you seek to understand what the author is writing in his book, in the passage that you're studying. What is he writing? Uh, what is he, what's his point? What does he want to say? Now, if you're going to preach this passage, you've got to be able to understand that. And part of understanding that is understanding the historical and cultural background to that passage. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. Uh, as you study your passage, don't forget to look at the history that surrounds it, that's behind it, that prompted the writer to write that epistle and that passage in the first place. Think about those things. It'll really be helpful to you. Understand anything that's culturally related and, 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 and know those things as well. So dig deep into studying those things. And as you work on your assignment and, and turn those into us, um, to your professor, or maybe me if I'm your professor for the class, uh, will help you in making sure you're on the right track. So again, hope it's been helpful, and we'll see you in the next video.